Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to be able to address you today and uh, can only apologize that uh, I cannot be there in person to welcome you to London and the Fourth Space Sustainability Summit. This is an important gathering which I am very pleased is happening. I, I have long felt that protecting the space that immediately surrounds our planet is one of those issues few recognize as important. But like so many of our present challenges that were ignored for too long, if we do not address it quickly, it will come back to haunt us in a big way. Now, I'm sure I do not need to remind you that uh, there are currently nearly four and a half thousand satellites orbiting the Earth with plans to deploy thousands more in the next few years. And yet, of those four and a half thousand, only about 1,500 are active. Uh, there are also more than 128 million tiny pieces of debris floating about up there, and more than 934,000 much bigger pieces, many of them more than 10 centimeters long. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I was, I was heartened when I paid a visit recently to uh, a British firm based in Oxfordshire called Astrosco, uh, which has been addressing this issue for some time. They plan to launch a spacecraft called ELSA-M in two years' time, and hopefully, if the testing uh, stage proves successful, this craft will become operational the following year. Climbing to 750 miles above Earth, it will use a magnetic capture mechanism to grab redundant satellites so they can either be moved to a safer location or brought back to Earth. I, I have always felt that space is rather like the oceans here on Earth. We think them so vast and so alien that we don't give too much thought to what we do to them. But we have to start seeing the immediate space around our precious planet as part of its environment. Just as on Earth, what do we do to it comes with consequences in the same way that the oceans are now undergoing rapid acidification and have become saturated with vast quantities of microplastics that are impossible to remove. So we are fast approaching a similarly saturated situation above us. We now recognize we have a duty to protect the oceans. We must also accept that we have a duty to protect the wider cosmos. We have to curb our belief that the space above us is so vast that we can allow what is out of sight to be out of mind. We must develop a sustainable way, a durable way of benefiting from space, just as we must here on the Earth. For instance, um, in 1969, having made it uh, into space, Neil Armstrong took his famous giant leap for humanity onto the moon. But now it seems that humanity could start to land a little too heavily on that lunar soil. Space may well be the final frontier, but it cannot become another Wild West, where it is every global corporation or nation for itself. Close international collaboration is key. It is critical that we work in partnership with the United Nations and with the private sector to manage the way we exploit both space and the resources we may find on the moon or in the future on Mars. There are innovative solutions like the one I've mentioned being developed by Astrosphere and the UK Space Agency. But collaboration on the funding of other projects monitored by a diligent program of annual reporting is a vital combination if we are to see responsible and safe development of space technology and the use we make of what is there in the skies above us. This is something my Sustainable Markets Initiative has been championing in a wide range of earthbound industries and I do hope the space sector will soon join us. 
To help that happen, having launched my Terra Carta for the planet in 2021, we are now working to create an Astra Carta to offer a similar framework for sustainability in space. I, I would be grateful for your engagement in what I have long considered to be an important step. It would build on the Artemis Accords to establish both peaceful but, crucially, sustainable space exploration, something to be agreed by all nations. Ladies and gentlemen, space technology and exploration are great examples of the best that human ingenuity, innovation and scientific discovery is capable of. We have much to be proud of in this sector, but we cannot neglect our responsibility as we wield such knowledge and deploy our technology. We have to ensure there are safeguards. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, I wish you every success in your endeavours over the next few days. They really are important. You are participating in a process that could lay down a responsible path for the future, applying the same degree of human ingenuity and foresight to develop solutions for a sustainable future for space. Just as we are finally coming together to protect the natural world here on Earth, let us now come together to protect the boundless and potentially bountiful worlds beyond it.